All right, y'all. I'm hoping that camera angle is good. Um, got a tripod finally for Christmas. So anyway, guys, welcome back to K- the K Reviews podcast. Um, I'm your host, Kenny Moss. Uh, today is an episode that I'm actually super, super stoked to do. Uh, we're going to be talking about my top 10 albums of 2023. Um, this is my personal opinion. So this is my personal favorite albums of 2023. If there is an album that didn't make the list that you think should have made the list, um, even though, again, it's my personal list. But if you think that I'm sleeping on an album, tell me all about it in the comments below. If an album that you think deserved to be on this list wasn't on this list, there's a few reasons why it might not be. One, maybe I haven't heard it. Two, maybe I didn't like it as much as you. And then three, maybe it's just not, maybe I did like it as much as you, but when I compared it to how much I listened to the projects that did make the list, I just didn't return to it as often as I did the projects that did make the list because at the end of the day, this is my personal list. I want to be as honest and as transparent as possible in saying these are the albums that I listened to most of the year. This year, the albums that I went back to most this year, the albums that I personally got the most enjoyment out of this year or got the most play out of me or or just that I have a personal biases towards. Whatever albums really struck a chord with me. That's what these 10 albums are. Tell me all about the albums below that um you think should have made the list and all that other stuff um i'll be happy to read and i'll be happy to go check out some albums i missed from this year because lord knows there's definitely some that um i didn't i didn't fully check out like i should have so uh yeah man let's get right into it i'm not gonna do any honorable mentions um if you know if it didn't make the list just know it was probably close to making the list um i i listened to a lot of projects this year um yeah, I'm not. I'm not gonna do any honorable mentions. We'll just let's just jump right into it. At number ten, I have "Scaring the Hose" by JPEG Mafia and Danny Brown. Um, I know a lot of people who are super high on this album. I know a lot of people who might consider this like the best rap album of the year and things like that. Um, I wouldn't. I, I'm not on that train. Um, I do really. I did really enjoy the project. Um, as far as experimental rap goes, you know, there's not many better artists you can ask for besides JPEG Mafia and Danny Brown. And, you know, if there was two people who were going to pair together, um, they're, they're as perfect as of a pairing as, as, as I could imagine in hip hop right now. So, um, yeah, I, I thought this did not disappoint. I thought it was a really good album. Um, it's just when I compare it to the other nine that I have placed above it, um, I'm not high on scaring the hose as I am the other nine that I have above it. Um, and there is kind of a threshold where we cross into, like, these are albums I really, really, really love. And I'll let you guys know when we get to that point. Um, but, yeah, this is an album that I really enjoyed. I would put it at number 10 on my top 10 albums of 2023. So at number 9, I'm going to go with Zartificial Intelligence by Zarface. This is certainly a bias pick. Um, I really like Sarvez as a group. I've been listening to them for a while now, and I'm, I'm very impressed with the run that they're on. Um, I don't think that they've been putting out their best material re- recently, but I do think that they've still been putting out very quality material recently. Um, and this album is still an album that I definitely got, I want to say, like a good amount of plays for me. Um, and, you know, I actually liked it better than the last two. Um, Odds Are Against Us and... Um, Zarmageddon. I actually liked this one better than those two. So, uh, yeah, I, I this is a, not anything super crazy about this project. Unless you're a Zarface fan, I wouldn't recommend this project to you. Um, but nonetheless, Zarface gave me what I expected, and I've returned to the project multiple times since it come out came out, and it's gonna make it's gonna make my list, man, at number nine. Um, now we get to number eight. Number eight on my list. Ooh, I'm blanking. Number eight on my list. Oh, number eight on my list was Cuarenta by Danny Brown. Um, when it came to this versus scaring the hose, I think Cuarenta just struck a little bit more of a personal chord with me. Scaring the hose. Um, it was just a fun album, but it didn't it didn't have anything that like really struck a, a note with me, like emotionally or personally. Cuarenta had moments like that where I, I felt um, like I was really understanding Danny on a personal level more with this album um and I really like that I I love when artists when I feel like I have a better understanding of an artist after listening to an album and I felt that way with Danny on this one um and Danny usually does that he's very good at um you know being transparent in his music and 
and talking about difficult things and struggles that he goes through. So um, I think he did that once again on this album. Hopefully, hopefully the mic didn't pick up that person speeding by right there. But um, yeah, Cuarenta by Danny Brown is going to go in my number eight spot. Um, I really enjoyed it. Um, yeah, Danny Brown ended up on this list twice. And he's not the only not the only artist who's going to end up on this tw list twice. You guys will see. I'm sure some of you, if you if you watch my videos, I'm sure you know who the other person is. But uh, yeah, Danny Brown making it on the top ten list twice. So shout out to Danny. Um at number seven, man, okay. At number seven, and it, it, this is the threshold. So remember I told you guys there's a threshold where we cross into albums that I like really, really love. This is the threshold right here. So everything from seven onward, it, albums that I really, really love, and al albums that if somebody walked up to me and said, this is the best album to come out this year, I wouldn't disagree with them. I wouldn't argue with them because I understand it. Um, but at number seven, I have Michael by Killer Mike. And... Um, it was tough to put this one this low. I was very impressed with this album. I mean, Killer Mike's delivery and like charisma on a track is just unmatched. Um, and his flow always is impeccable. Um, and you have to love his subject matter as well. There's a lot of moments on this album where he touches on, you know, really heavy subject matter and um, really relatable subject matter. And, you know, I think he gives all facets of his life on this album. I think we get a an idea of who Michael was. I think we get an idea of who Michael is. And I think we get an idea of who Michael is striving to be. And, um, I really love this album, man. I really, I think, I think it gives you a good variety of different styles of tracks. I think it gives you good subject matter tracks. Um, I think killer Mike comes correct on almost every song. I think the production is impeccable on it. It sounds like an event. When I listen to this album, it sounds like a big deal. Um, so yeah, I, I love I love Michael. If somebody walked up to me and said, this is the Michael by Killer Mike is the best album of 2023. I would not debate you. I would not debate you because I fully understand where you're coming from. Um, it's one of my favorites as well. So yeah, at number seven, I'm going to put Michael by Killer Mike. At number six, the first album on this list that isn't a rap album and doing a quick scan. Um, this is, it's the only album on this list that isn't a rap album. Um, sorry guys. I'm, I'm a rap head. I, I love rap music. It's my passion. Like I'm, I'm gonna have a natural bias towards rap albums. I I I, I don't know what to tell you guys. Um, I'm not the needle drop, <laughs> so uh, I'm not the needle drop. I'm not gonna. I'm not equally loving of every single music genre. Like rap is definitely my lane. So it's gonna dominate my videos now and probably in the future. But that doesn't mean I'm gonna do only rap. Anyway, getting way off topic here. Number six, I got. Uh, New Blue Sun by Andre 3000. Um, I really enjoy jazz music. And, um, you know, as I, I am a rap head first and foremost. And would I have wanted a rap album from Andre 3000? Of course. I mean, I think any hip hop fan wants a, would want a rap album from Andre 3000 at this point in his career. Um, he's, he's the only all time great rapper who doesn't have a solo rap album at this point. So... Yeah, I, I definitely wanted one. Um, and when I heard that it wasn't a rap album, was there a little bit of disappointment? Sure. Um, but, you know, I, I kept an open mind. Being somebody who really enjoys jazz as well, um, you know, I kept an open mind about it. And I thought, you know, if, if, this, is, if this album is just Andre playing the flute, I'm not going to be with it. But if it's Andre playing the flute in context of real jazzy and pretty music, I'm with it. Um, and luckily, it was the latter. And... I, I really enjoyed this album. Um, when I was the, I, I work delivering packages and um, sometimes I'm in very pretty and scenic and, and areas um, where I get like really good, beautiful views of nature and things. And this album was perfect for like seeing those. I sounded like Kermit for a second there. This album is perfect for seeing um, like just being with nature, seeing beautiful views uh, with this album as a backdrop was, it was awesome. Um, I really enjoyed this 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 project it very nearly cracked my top five but at the end of the day i had to give my top five to the five albums that i truly played the most this year the ones that i just really just played non-stop um and 
you know, when I evaluated it, as much as I loved the new Blue Sun, I just was not returning to it as much as I was returning to the five albums that made my top five. And so that's why I had to keep it just outside of the top five. Um, but nonetheless, it is a top five worthy album. And again, if somebody said this was their album of the year, I wouldn't argue with them. Um, I really enjoyed this. I thought it was beautiful music. I thought it's great music to meditate to. Um, yeah, Andre 3000, I wouldn't be mad if you put out another flute jazz um, type of album like this. I, I really wouldn't be mad. I really enjoyed it. So, um, yeah, go go wherever the wind takes you, man. Um, but, yeah, after that, we're, we're going to get into the top five, my top five favorite albums of 2023. And, um, you know, I might get some hate for the five that I pick here, but that's okay, man. It, it's just me giving my honest opinion. At number five, I got Magic 2. Magic 2 uh, by Nas. Um, yeah, man, I played the shit out of this album. I, I reviewed this album. It's actually still my most watched YouTube video, um, funny enough. But yeah, when Magic 2 came out, I was not expecting him to drop another one. I thought this was the Nas album that we were going to get for 2023. And um, I wasn't disappointed with it. I thought that they took the magic premise and really went more full-fledged into it thematically on this album as opposed to the first magic. The first magic was just... The first magic is like a modern-day Illmatic. It's just rugged beats, incredible verses, straight to the point. Um, this one was definitely more thematic on the magic theme. You definitely saw way more references and ties to the theme of magic throughout the album, um, and that made me appreciate it a little bit more. Um... And as far as production goes, Hit Boy on this album, it's not one of my favorites in the Hit Boy and Nas series, like overall. Like, like I think just how well Nas is rapping on some of the other projects leads me to liking those other projects more. But Hit Boy's production on this one was incredible. I was I, I like production wise, simply speaking about the beats, Magic 2 might be one of my favorite um in the series. Um so I was not disappointed by it at all. I, I love, love, love what Hit Boy did on this album. I thought that Nas, as always, Nas is going to be lyrically correct. Um, he's going to come with interesting subject matter, songs that are going to make you think a little bit, um, songs that are going to have a nostalgic feel to them, like What This All Really Means and Pistols on Your Album Cover, which I think are some of the best songs to come out of Nas and Hit's run together. Um, so Magic 2... Not one of the best in the six album stretch from Nas and Hit, but damn, a really, really good none, really, really good album nonetheless, and an album that I played the absolute shit out of, especially because I didn't think we were going to be getting another one. Um, so I played the shit out of it, and it's going to make it in my number five spot um, for 2023. And number four, and I'm sure it's no surprise at this point, I said Danny Brown was the first artist who was going to make the list twice, and that there was going to be another artist who was going to make the list twice. Um, it should come as no surprise. Nas is on here again at number four. He back to back spots, five and four. At number four, I got Magic Three by Nas. Um, and like I said, I was not expecting another one after Magic Two, but when this surprise dropped, I was like, God damn! Like they are on another level, man. Uh, two months for two months to pass by, and for you to give us another album and to give us, in my opinion, obviously by the ranking here, um, a slightly better album. Man, it is just. The whole run in, in and of itself is impressive, but these two albums in this year um, really impressed me because just how close they were released to one another. Um, I give the edge to Magic 3 just because I think overall it feels like a bigger, more immense project. Um, obviously, there's more songs on it. Um, I think production-wise, I do slightly prefer Magic 2, but I think I prefer Nas, Nas's contributions more on Magic 3. Um, and the production, it's not like it's such a wide gap in the production to where, um, you know, the production being slightly better on magic two leads, leads that one to being put above it. Um, if hopefully I made sense with that, but yeah, magic three was phenomenal. If you want to see me talk about it at length, I also reviewed that one, um, on this channel. So go check that out as well. Um, but yeah, Magic 3 is another album that I played the absolute shit out of when it came out. We went and saw Nas and Wu-Tang in Las Vegas, and Magic 3, I was just playing like crazy up to that concert, and he actually did some songs from Magic 3 at that concert, which I thought was really cool. He did Fever, which was perfect. We were in Vegas, so Fever is a perfect song to do in Vegas because of the gambling theme and everything. Um, yeah, man. So, Nas, 
Back to back slots, five and four, two two slots in the top five. Shout out to Nasir Jones. Incredible, incredible year for you, my man. Um, for you to be fifty years old, just like hip hop itself, and uh, to put out two albums back to back in a span of a couple months like this was was an incredibly impressive. Super super big year for you, Nas. Um, shout out, shout out, it, the goat in my eyes. And with that being said. We're going to get into my top three now. These top three albums is literally like three albums that I consider to be damn near perfect. Like, like these are three albums where I've favorited almost every single track on the album. It, and the tracks that I didn't favor were either like an interlude or a skit or a reprise. But every real song on the albums, I favorited every single one. Um... So these are albums that I see as damn near perfect. I absolutely love all three of these albums, and we'll just get right into it. At number three, I have Glorious Game by L. Michael's Affair and Black Thought. And I actually got uh, this on vinyl. Oh, shit, it's right here, actually. I got this on vinyl today um, and just put it on the wall up here. But this is an incredible album, man. I mean, L. Michael's Affair, super luscious, beautiful, and soulful production on this album. Um, I love that Black Thought is in this point in his career where he is venturing outside of the roots and joining with Danger Mouse and joining with L. Michael's Affair because, man, we're just seeing that it doesn't matter who what production he's going over. He, he's going to be incredible every time. I mean, Black Thought, I can't say enough about him, man. He's one of the greatest rappers of all time. He doesn't get the respect he deserves. Um, he deserves to be talked about as one of the best rappers of all time way more often than he actually is. <laughs> Um, yeah, and to see him pair up with, uh, just a really, like, beautiful group, like L. Michael's Affair, I, I think they're a group, I, I assume they're a group, it might just be one guy doing all the instruments, but I, I think they're, I think it's multiple people. Anyway, the production from, from L. Michael's Affair, absolutely, absolutely beautiful, and let's just throughout the entirety of this thing, I mean, Grateful, when it comes in, just hits so freaking hard out the jump, and then you get Glorious Game, which is just this bass line, just this nasty, groovy bass line, and then you get the prettier songs, like Batgirl, um, and Alone, that are more like, a little bit more like soulful, and man, I, I just, I, I, I'm really impressed with this album, through and through, um, front to back, uh, I, I don't think there's a bad beat on there. I don't think there's a bad verse on there. I don't think Black Thought's ever spit a bad verse. Um, but man, Black Thought has just proven with with these with these projects outside of the roots that he could build a, a, a solo discography of his own that is very telling of how great he is. I mean, the Streams of Thought series, Cheat Codes, and Glorious Game alone, that is five projects better than most rappers have. And that is just his solo stuff. That's not even counting... Illadelph Half-Life and Things Fall Apart and Phrenology and How I Got Over and all the Roots projects, Game Theory, so many, so many Roots projects that are incredible. So I, just another phenomenal, phenomenal addition to your discography, Black Thought. Um, you are one of the greatest rappers of all time, and you cemented it once again with this album. If you do another one with L. Michael's Affair, I'm with it. If you do another one with Danger Mouse, I'm with it. If we get another Roots album, I'm with it. If we get another uh, project with Ninth Wonder, work with whoever, man. Get, give us one with Madlib. That would be crazy. Black Thought and Madlib would be crazy. Um, or give us one with Alchemist. That would also be crazy. But yeah, man, Black Thought, keep just keep giving us a project a year, man. If you give if you drop an album every year, Black Thought, oh, you're blessing us, bro. You're blessing us. Um, at number two on my top top ten albums of 2023, I'm I'm gonna go this oh. Okay, see, this is a tough one. These top two spots, I have been wrestling back and forth with between what is my number one and what is my number two. So it's really like a 1A, 1B kind of situation. And it's really hard for me to say this, but I think I'm going to go at number two, I'm going to go Integrated Tech Solutions by Aesop Rock. Um, this was super close to being number one. And like I said, it's basically tied for number one. It's like a 1B in this case. Um, and if you ask me tomorrow, I might want to move it up, up to number one. I'm sure I'll be editing this video pissed at myself that I put Integrated Tech Solutions at number two instead of number one. But nonetheless, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put it at number two right now. Um, it is incredible, man. Aesop Rock, um, 
really just continues to blow my mind with just how good he is. And, and this stretch that he's on recently, I mean, if you just look at this decade, Spirit World Field Guide in 2020, Garbology in 2021, and now Integrated Tech Solutions in 2023. That is three incredible albums in this decade. And like Nas, Aesop's been doing it since the 90s, and here we are in the 2020s, and he put out three of some of his best albums, in my opinion. Um, so Aesop, incredibly impressive run that you are on right now. Um, I think this is one of the best albums that you have put out. Um it's got hilarious songs. It's got super topical and meaningful songs. Overall, conceptually, I think the concept is works really well together. Um, even the moments that don't feel super conceptually tight still tie in in some way. Um, and I'm just super impressed by this, man. I'm super impressed by everything about, everything about this album. I kind of want to put it at one now that I'm talking about it. Um, but I'm not going to put it at one just because it wasn't my most played. There, There is one album that was far and away my most played album. Um, and so I have to put that one at number one, I think. But if I was if I was giving like my, my best albums of the year, not necessarily my personal favorites, if I was trying to be objective, I would say there's not a better album this year than Integrated Tech Solutions. It is just so well done and perfectly crafted front to back, man. I'm, I'm so impressed every time I throw it on. And, and Aesop has gotten to the point where damn near every album he puts out is like that. I'm just blown, blown away by it. So yeah, integrated tech solutions. Uh, my number two, AKA my one B AKA sometimes my one A AKA tomorrow might be number, my number one, but for now, number two on, uh, my top 10 albums of 2023. Shout out to Aesop rock. Incredible, incredible album. Um, and number one on my list is going to be Voir Dear by Earl Sweatshirt and the Alchemist. Um, and, you know, I wish I had dived in more in depth into why I love this album so much in my review. I did do a review of this album. It was a pretty short review. Um, and I wish I had gone a little bit longer. Um, but, man, I cannot get enough of this album. I think Alchemist came incredible with the beats. Like I said, I favorited all 11 songs on this album. Um, every beat is, is absolutely incredible to me. Earl on every song is absolutely incredible to me. I mean, it, it's infectious. Like his little, like lazy stumbly flow on this album. I can't get enough of it, man. It's, it, it stuck in my head. It's infectious as hell. And I can't stop playing it. Songs like Vin Scully, songs like Sentry, songs like Mancala, songs like Caliphate, songs like Free the Ruler, songs like Mac Deuce, um, 27 Braids, uh, 100 High Street, man, like, I'm, I'm gonna end up naming the whole album if I keep going, but I'm, I, yeah, I'm blown away by this project, to me, this might be my personal favorite Earl project, a lot of what he's talking about on this project is very relatable to me, and I just love how it doesn't have as much of a melancholic feeling as his other albums, it has that traditional Earl feel, but it feels charismatic and and brighter and i love that about this album and i love that we got a brighter charismatic earl album and and it's it's with one of the best producers of all time and he came correct and um you know i don't i don't think i see it quite on the level of like a mad villainy but i do think it's gonna go down as like when we talk about producer rapper collabs you know, we're going to name Mad Villainy, we're going to name Pinata, but then I think we're going to start getting into the cheat codes and the voir dire is like, I think it will be in the conversation with those about some of the, as one of the best rapper producer link ups um, that we've seen. And I'm super stoked about it, man. I'm super stoked it exists. It is definitely my most played album this year and um, just barely is going to edge out integrated tech solutions at my number one spot. Um, and again, tomorrow I might be mad about it. Tomorrow, I might want to move Wadir down to two. But as of right now, it's my number one. I absolutely love it. I think it's incredible. Um, yeah, so that is my top 10. Just to recap, we got uh, Scare and the Hose, JPEG Mafia, and Danny Brown at number 10. We got Zartificial Intelligence by Zarface at number nine. We got Quarenta by Danny Brown at number eight. We've got, what was my seven? Oh, Michael by Killer Mike at number seven. Incredible album. Uh, New Blue Sun by Andre 3000 at number 6, Magic 2 by Nas at number 5, Magic 3 by Nas at number 4, Glorious Game, Black Thought, and L. Michael's Affair at number 3, Integrated Tech Solutions, Aesop Rock at number 2, and at number 1, 
Wadir by Earl Sweatshirt and the Alchemist. Um, yeah, really great year for rap, man. Um, I'm sure a really great year for music overall. I know Gorillaz also dropped an album this year. I know that um, Paramore also dropped an album this year. I believe Sampha dropped an album this year. Um, and some of those I did listen to, but I didn't listen to them enough to, to really keep them in consideration for this list, which is the reason why they were off the list. Um, so it's not because those albums were bad. It's not me saying that these 10 albums are better than any of those albums. Just I didn't, I didn't delve deep enough in them for me to honestly rank them here. Um, and then as far as an album like Utopia, which I'm sure a lot of people are going to be like, how the fuck is Utopia not here? How did you not have Utopia on the list? Um, I'm a, I'm a sucker for lyrical hip hop and Utopia, even though it was a really good album, a really well produced album, it just wasn't the type of rap that I tend to gravitate towards and pretty much everything on this list was. So, um, I just got to be honest, guys, I just got to give my personal opinion on my personal 10 favorite albums this year. And I did. Those are my 10 favorite ones. Let me know what you guys think. Tell me all about how stupid I am for not including this album or that album in the comments below. Tell me um, if you agree with any of my picks. Tell me what you like about these albums, what you hate about these albums. Um, what albums are you looking forward to coming out in 2024? How was your guys' 2023? How was your Christmas? Tell me everything. Tell me everything. Um, but yeah, I appreciate you guys. It's been Kenny Moss and K Reviews. Oh man, I gotta tell you, um, this this Friday, um, by the time this video is up, uh, I will have a mixtape dropping on um, December 29th, 12, 12 a.m. Eastern Time, December 29th, 9 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, um, on December 28th, uh, but Las Sombras, um, I worked really hard on it, um, it's my second project to come out this year. I dropped an album in May this year and now dropping this project uh, here in December of this year. So two projects a year is the goal. And I, I was able to make the cut this time around. Um, but yeah, man, go check out Las Sombras. I, I worked really hard on it. Go go listen to it. Let me know what you think. Um, I'll put the I'll put uh, the link to um, to all my music in the description and everything. I'll put the link to my TikTok in the description. I post a ton of videos about my record collection on TikTok, so go check those out. Um, yeah, I appreciate you guys watching. My name is Kenny Moss. Please, please go listen to my mixtape, um, and please talk about uh, what you thought about these albums in 2023 as a whole down below. Oh, real quick, I want to mention, um, my homie Marco produced every single track on La Sombra, so I'm going to put his Instagram and his SoundCloud in the description below. Make sure you guys go check out that and give Marco some love. And again, go listen to the mixtape and show the mixtape some love, because um, he, he made every beat on there. They're all fire. All the samples are super dope, so go, go show Marco some love. Uh, appreciate you guys.